So hey there, fellows. Right here, we have today's guinea pig. Such a lovely car. As for what we intend to do, we've tried similar stuff in the past. Driving around with no gas, driving around on fuel that is not gas, and those we've tried plenty of. What we haven't tried is driving around with no carburetor. <laughs> and here's what we have in mind for today. We want to try removing the carburetor and the associated bits, leaving just the intake manifold. And with the use of stuff like this and like this, also some quick start, and whatever else we can think of, the goal being getting a car with no carburetor, well, not just to start, which all of us assume is doable, but also to drive. We want to see whether we can pull this off or not. Start the engine with no carburetor and attempt to get moving. I assume that none of you guys have attempted anything like this before, but we will in this video and let's get to it. Originally, this video was uploaded in 2021. Check this out, we've removed the carby, it's just the intake manifold now. The orifice through which the air will be coming in is really big. And for starters, let's whip out the quick start. This can of ether. Doesn't want to run at low revs, though. Maybe pour in some gasoline? Yeah, I got this. I can push it in forcefully. Don't have to, though. I just cannot feed it in small doses. This syringe is jerky, and I can't get it to work. If only it'd articulate gradually. But what's interesting here is that, well, when there's vacuum in the intake manifold, you start feeding in the gasoline, and when it reaches the flange or thereabouts, you'll notice that it, well, atomizes. You don't see a stream pouring into the manifold. It's as if there's a jet that breaks it apart, into dust that is then distributed among the cylinders. Let's try this now. Get a stream going. <laughs> Something's popping and flaming in there. <laughs> Remember what we were discussing prior? There is some pretty massive airflow occurring, which in turn means we need plenty of fuel to get the mixture right. But we've got this right here, we're going to quickly drill through it, install it, and it'll seal while we might have a slight vacuum leak, but whatever. Anyway, let's see how the engine runs. This should sort of simulate, well, not necessarily operation at idle. I think the revs will be a bit higher, like 1200, even if they get up to 1500 to 2000. The point is, if we find that sweet spot, that'll just be terrific. We'll go. And so this is our fuel system, let's go!
Why is it stalling? Oh, the gasoline isn't making it inside. It runs! This ain't normal idle. But look at how it's disappearing. Engine operation is stable. Whenever you touch the end bit, the revs change. All it takes is a millimeter. The consumption is pretty impressive. Not bad... at all. Look at that! You need to film this! Film it from here! That's it? Out of fuel? We are out of fuel. I mean... How long was it running? Half a liter per five minutes on average. So the engine runs, even though it's not all that stable. I think we need to seal this plastic cover to get rid of any leaks, even though it's pressing up against the flange so hard it's caving in. We've also revised the fuel system. We are now running this bottle, or what do you call it? The thing that connects to an IV drip. Here we have the fuel tank, which we'll also try to seal, so that we don't get doused with fuel. And my understanding is that when this is fitted to something, well, you got a valve in there which allows air to make its way up here and be exchanged with liquid. So let's fill the tank and see how far one liter... I was about to say how far one kilogram of fuel will get us. Because fuel consumption is up there, I mean, will we even be able to drive? Let's give this a try. What the... it's beginning to pull it through. Rev count? About two grand? Probably more. You see that? With how much air and fuel we're feeding in, engine operation is stable. Should we perhaps make the hole a bit smaller? Because it is sucking in a lot of fuel. Should I switch it off? Shuts down immediately, like a diesel engine. All right then. Wait, where do you think you're going? I'm still trying to figure out how it started. Sorry, I was too slow. Dude! I still need to get used to it. Maybe some more? No, we're good. We're driving with no carburetor, believe it or not. There's something I've never experienced. And I've seen some things. Hold your horses. I'm trying to modulate the clutch. Oh, right, I gotta start it now. Okay, right, yeah. Come on now. Um, like... 
goes way worse than with a carby. We might want to open the hole back up. We are moving. Second gear. This is great. Hauling in second gear. Not gonna circle the complex. There's too much snow on that side. Why didn't you tell me? Full blast. Let's go. Come on now. Are we just spinning the wheels? How do I even give you a push? No idea. Marin, these tires are trash. Does have a welded diff though. Come on now, oh, it's pulling. We are out. Excellent. Terrific. Wheels are spinning, yeah? They are, what do you know? Wheels are spinning. And now we're accelerating. Second, and this is sketchy. Wanna try third in the name of science? There you go, this is third gear. It's driving in third? With no issue. Holy cow. Imagine if your carburetor breaks. There you go, I'd say that's the takeaway from this video. Oh, I'm getting a bit pedal happy. I take it this only requires one person? I'm not even squeezing this bottle anymore. Really? Yeah, revs are a bit too high. Whatever, I mean, the car moves, right? With no trouble at all, even though I am working the clutch slightly. Oh, that's a lot of snow, we'd better... How's the fuel consumption? Not even all that much. Oncoming traffic. Yeah, you'd better run. Good call. Is that fourth? No, I'm in second. But I'm already scared. You see what's going on with the weather. And that right there was some sort of... This'll be a good video. For sure. How do you guys like driving with no carby? Pretty neat, eh? Oh look, they're selling gasoline. Oh look, 45 rubles per liter, awesome. We should have purchased another liter. We're half? Certainly we have 20 rubles lying around. Feel free to look around the car. I didn't bring any cash with me. That might have been our only chance to make it back to base. Oh, we can still make it back home. Well, I mean, if we... You know what we can do? This. Drive back to base in second gear, just like this. We got good bottom end torque in second. Because I've dialed the vacuum back. The revs be like... We're driving in second right now. And it's even picking up some speed. Here we go. It'll make it, I'm telling you it will. You see, I told you. Snow is knee deep. Yeah, knee deep in snow, but whatever. Engine is pulling, meaning the injector is working the full 107%. I think they'll hear us anyway. We've done some driving and it was grand. I mean, a bottle, an IV drip, and a plate, some plastic, yeah, that. And who even needs a carburetor? Can someone open the gate? All right, guys, now let's do a quick recap. This was actually beautiful, 107% so. Except that initially we thought that a 10 millimeter orifice would be enough, but we bored it out to then cover half of it afterwards. Because there was actually... Quite a bit of air going in. I mean, 10 millimeters doesn't seem like a lot. And how much air can a 1.2 liter engine even be pulling in? Through that sort of hole. But in reality, it pulls in quite a bit. Anyway, this would be the simplest and cheapest carburetor in the entire world. No other way to even describe it. It consists of a bottle, IV drip, and a piece of plastic. And that's it, no other components that constitute this carby. Well, aside from the gasoline that the system contains. Go ahead and try using this instead of a carburetor. Your car will start, drive, and operate at 107% capacity. This experiment has been a massive success, and that's all I got for you. Watch us consider subbing, send in your suggestions, comment, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.